Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this morning's study. Uh, we're going to continue uh, studying Judges uh, 6, 7, and 8 and finishing the line of Gideon. Uh, so before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful, Lord, for the time we have each morning uh, to open up your word. We just invite your presence into our homes, into our hearts, into our lives. We just pray, Lord, that as we continue to study Judges and its application for our present time, that your Holy Spirit can bring to our remembrance the things that we have studied in the past, that uh, you can correct uh, anything that we may have that is an error, and that you can give us new light for our feet. Be with each person who is searching for truth, the people that we have an influence on, that we share with. Help us, Lord, to represent you, and may your Holy Spirit help in when we share things with others that they can understand and that we can explain them clearly. We pray for power in our lives personally, Lord, that we can <clears throat> overcome the sins in our lives, that you can show us our need of you and your love and compassion and mercy and power. Uh, be with us now in this study. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. Welcome to the study. And... Um, uh, as you can see, we're still on Judges 8, and there's a few things that we have to finish up to finish this line of Gideon. Now, we had uh, addressed the fact that Sukkoth and Penuel uh, represent um, these judgments that symbolize Nashville and, and what happens with the United States on January 6th, so Nashville on December 25th. Uh, 2020, and uh, then January 6th, 2021. So those two events are symbolized. Now, we also had, in previous understandings of this, it represented, we had it represent the American-Canadian group, and Ziba and Zalmuna representing Odilio's and Colin's messages. So... We, we struggled with that because part of the thing that we look at is this is, you know, this enemy, the Midianites. But we can see that there is this conflict, or there is this strife over these messages. And the suggestion is that um, <clears throat> if we understand the Midianites to be strife, then there should be no problem in understanding that these messages of Collins and Odilio's have strife within this movement uh, that has existed because of these messages and the understanding of them. Now, <clears throat> um, so I'm going to just, well, I'll go to the chart again. <clears throat> so you can see uh, I put the verses there, uh, Judges 8, verse 7, 8, verse 9 for Succoth and Penuel. That's going to be, they're going to be beaten down, that's Succoth, and they're going to tear down the tower, that's Penuel. And so we say that those line up with those events. Um, and um, I think, so it's clear now, we understand that this darkness in this line has to do with a misapprehension regarding um, the Nashville vision that Ellen White had. And we have tied it to um, this rejection of, of the spirit of prophecy of this warning. And this movement uh, now addresses this uh, specifically on November 9th. We take up uh, this prediction. And we have a date for it. Now, that date, we believe that that date is correct, July 18, 2020. That is when this was to occur. But that this has been averted. It has been delayed. 
but it doesn't mean we were wrong to warn Nashville. And actually this fits in with uh, Jonah's uh, warning about regarding Nineveh. So we can see that that application was made by Jeff prior to July 18. And so we believe that uh, the fact that we warned Nashville is why that event did not occur. And we also see other parallels as well in, in messages that are delayed. But we can say quite specifically here that there was nothing wrong with our prediction. Um, the main problem, well, there would be two things. One is obviously you give a warning and it can be heated. But the other thing is we were not prepared for those events that were to occur. Now, the pandemic and this 100 days of prayer uh, <coughs> fit into these symbols, or these symbols fit into uh, our understanding of the Civil War. Um, and also, so we have the 100 days that's in Ellen White's uh, line, we're going to have uh, the 100 days from when the Civil War begins to the Battle of Manassas. And then 13 days later, she has a vision regarding the Battle of Manassas. And so that occurs here in this line. Now, you could say from July 4th to 18th is 14 days. But in this case, the 100 days begins at the beginning of March 27th and ends at the, at the end of July 4th. So that's 100 days complete. So 144,000 minutes, and uh, the 13 days then is 18,720 minutes. So that would go from the end of July 4th uh, and to the end of July 18th, or to beginning of July 18th, pardon me. So that would be the 13 days. And the 300 crossing the Jordan in 8 verse 4, we understand that this is that message uh, that continues. So they're faint yet pursuing. So this message here, uh, so the first message, of course, is regarding that prediction, regarding what Ellen White has in that vision. And now we're, we're going to pursue this message. At July 18th, we have a second message arriving. And that message is that um, even though the event didn't occur, it was still correct. And so we see in December 25th, the bombing of Nashville, and then January 6th, the siege of Washington. These two events um, are the formalization and, and the empowerment of that message. And Stephen brought up at the end of the study about the 187 minutes uh, that purportedly is this period of time before Trump uh, gave any reaction negatively towards uh, what was happening. I don't believe that that's correct, but that is still in the record. And so uh, the fact that there's this 187 minutes on January 6th that's noted by the January 6th committee, um, I think is still significant. And then we have, of course, the 10 days of prayer that follow beginning on January 6th. And when you get to January 16th, that leaves 343 days to December 25th, 2021. So now what we need to address, even though there's probably lots of other questions that we would have, what we need to address now is what the third angel's message is that arrives and what verses in Judges 8 would then be this third angel's message arriving. So hopefully that's a good summary, people. Anybody has questions about any of that? Does anybody? Just... I think this line now is fairly solid, but there might still be some loose ends that we, we could look at. Okay, so the 343 days from the end of that 10 days of prayer to December 25th, 2021, we know 343 is 7 times 7 times 7, right? So 
we can see the significance of that, of course, in this structure. Oops, I need to put that as. And the question then is, what is the third angel arriving? And what verses? So in this passage in Judges 8, you're going to have um, Zeb and Zalmunna are going to be defeated, right? Well, they're going to be captured, right? And, and they... Um, in verse 18, or verse 14 of chapter 8, and uh, well, we start at verse 13, 8 13. <clears throat> um, okay, so Angela has a comment here. Interesting passages about sharing God's word with rebels compared to briars, thorns, and scorpions in Ezekiel 2, especially verse 6. Okay, so. Um, so we're going to go there first before we just go on. So this is Ezekiel's call. So remember, Ezekiel is Samuel Snow, because Ezekiel begins his prophesy on the fifth day of the fourth month, right? Which actually is July 21st in uh, 592 BC. So on the Julian calendar. And we know that midnight, Samuel Snow's midnight, is Boston on July 21st, 1844, also the fifth day of the fourth month. <clears throat> so, um, so he's supposed to give this message. I send thee, in verse 3, to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me, they and their fathers, have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and, they, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they hear or whether they will forbear, for they are rebellious house, yet shall, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Um, so we know that this call here, we can see the parallel um, to Judges 8. Verse 7. Um, so you have the thorns of the wilderness with briars. I will tear your flesh with thorns of the wilderness and with briars. So can we see that this is a message? And that message is the message of Ezekiel to the house of Israel. Can, can we see that this application that Angela uh, brought to our attention that this fits with this punishment, that this punishment is actually a message in our time. And that message we're applying to this one, specifically to the bombing of Nashville on December 25th, 2020. That this, this is a message that comes to this movement because on December 6th, uh, FFA is going to issue this declaration that repudiating basically everything that they had taught regarding the symbolic use of numbers, which basically just destroys the entire message. And then we're going to have um, 21 days later, we're going to have this bombing of Nashville. Right. So that's that's the response to what happens on December 6th. We end up with this bombing of Nashville. Does, does that make sense to, to people? 
that this is a message that this movement then uh, had been given, but now it's going to be formalized by the bombing of Nashville. But it is a message. But that message that we had been giving regarding July 18th, since July 18th, that it was correct, that's actually affirmed on December 25th, 2020. I, th I think that needs to be uh, very clear. Now, um, Angel also refers us to manuscript 15, 1888, has some of Ellen White's counsel and reproof about examining people's views of scripture. Uh, how does that apply? I don't know. Do we need to go there, Angela, to read it? Or do you just want to refer us to that to study? Well, it, it, it would be a, a good thing to read it. Yeah, it, it's kind of what we've been saying all along, that we need to make sure that all our comments are based on God's word and not to shun and criticize and put down folks who have a view that dif differs from ours. Right. Yeah, so manuscript uh, 15, 1888. Oh, so this is published November 1st, 1888 in Minneapolis. And it's quite a long uh, section. So is there any particular part of it? Because this would take us a long time to read. Well, I guess we can read it in our own time. I, 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 I just read it a short time ago, and I can. Well, she named some names in there, and I was thinking, yeah, that's the kind, kind of the spirit that's in the movement now, where we're still shunning people who don't agree with us. We need to correct that. She's yeah. Very clear about that. Yeah, there's um, about the fourth or fifth paragraph. It says, "Of one thing, I am certain: as Christians." You have no right to entertain feelings of enmity, unkindness, and prejudice towards Dr. Wagner, right? And, of course, we could just put anybody's name in there who is sharing what they understand to be truth. It's not so much that, you know, what somebody's teaching is, is correct or not. She says you have no right as Christians to pick flaws, to criticize, to work in the dark, to prejudice minds with your objections. This is Satan's way of working. And so we know that, uh, you know, we have a conflict within the movement and um, everything that we should, we, we do should be in the open, right? There shouldn't be, you know, us talking in secret with our friends about uh, people and then saying something different publicly. Um, we understand, uh, and, and that we also need to talk to those people, right? Um, that we're seeking to reconcile, um, you know, with those that we differ. And, that, and that's been our goal this whole time in how we've approached the topic. Now, sometimes it could look fairly critical if you took some of our studies out of context, which has been done, right? Statements that I made. Um, and, and these were spread abroad and without the person ever talking to me about the statements, saying that I said, you know, uh, this is what Colin said, is he said that I said that his, him and Odilio, the, uh, their presentations are a curse, that they're a curse. And of course, I never said that, but he was taking some statements on a study that we were doing. And I think it's particularly, it could be Judges 8. Um, but I'm not certain because he, he gave the, uh, the three videos where I supposedly said this. And I went through them. Uh, some other people went through them and couldn't find this statement. But, but this was taken as a reason that, you know, not to go to the camp meeting uh, or one of the reasons. But we know that we're not condemning Colin or Adilio as people. And we're not saying that they don't have light because we actually believe that what Odilio presented and what Colin presented is light for this movement to examine. It's just that we can't examine just 
one group of messages. We know that God is giving light to this whole movement. Right? It's, and it's not about, you know, us and them. It's not about, you know, who, who God has chosen or anything like that. It's, it's simply that God has given light to this movement and all of us need to examine it and decide for ourselves. And, and so that's a difficult position to be in um, for, for any of us to have to address, you know, the conflicts that exist and these differences that exist in how we understand these lines. But we do believe that God has given light in the study of his word and we have spent time studying those things and putting them on the public record for all to study. And, and we believe that, that there is an error that is made in Colin's conclusion, as well as Odilio's. It has nothing to do with character. We're not deciding that, you know, they have some evil character or some evil intent. We don't know the motives of what people or what behind people's actions. We can say that the actions themselves, it's not, it's, it's improper. We have uh, the counsel and the spirit of prophecy regarding these types of things. And we sometimes get caught up in that. So this is a rebuke to all of us, not to just some group of people. And, 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 and I made a mistake, you know, for a year, I didn't, um, get involved in the controversy from uh, 2000, December 25th, 2001 to December 25th uh, or 24th, I guess, technically, to uh, 2022. But I, I, I didn't want to have any controversy with the American or Canadian groups. So I, I listened for a while to some of their studies, but I didn't really comment other than uh, there was initially some points I made regarding some of the uh, chronology or something, but I avoided any kind of controversy. And um, I did that thinking that that was the right thing to do. In the end, I see that it, it didn't accomplish what I'd hoped is that, you know, if I backed off and just allowed people time and space would uh, would they eventually just, you know, sort of uh, soften a bit? But but it doesn't appear to be that way. So, but I don't know. You know, I mean, I don't know. Ultimately, I don't think my motives were wrong, uh, not to be in conflict with my brethren. And it doesn't mean I wasn't talking to Colin or anything, because I was. I'd been there, visited him. I'd also written some emails. Uh, trying to clear these things up with him personally. But just in the public forum, uh, I wasn't uh, entering into controversy. And that's because we want to, to follow God, what, what he's asking us to do. But we kept studying, right? And in this studying, we kept finding more and more light. So now when we come to this, um, this section here, uh, in Judges 8, uh, the part that I think is pertinent to our study uh, has to do after they have captured Zeba and Zelmuna. Um, so in 8 verse 13, it says, um, And Gideon the son of Josh returned from battle before the sun was up. Now, um, so what is it we notice about this verse first? What should we take note of when we read this verse eight, to help us? Thirteen. So it's it's Judges eight thirteen, Daniel eight thirteen, Palmoni. Okay, so so that's significant. We would agree upon. Okay. Now. Um, is there any other symbols here that we should note?
in Judges 8.13. Because there's a symbol here, which we've noticed before, but it's here in this verse. So I think when you're looking at Judges 8.13, because of the Palmoni symbol, um, you should be looking for Palmoni to be working here. So it's going to be Gideon, the son of Joash. Now, they could have just said Gideon returned from the battle, but they put Gideon, the son of Joash. And we know that Joash, his Hebrew number is 3101. And what did we attach to that symbol? So the phrase Gideon, the son of Joash, uh, the sum of it in Gematria is, is 29. So two, uh, well, 20th day of the ninth month, it's 209. Okay, so that just that phrase, Gideon, the son of Joash. Um, but with the number, the Hebrew number of 3101, we had attached to that um, from the first day of the first month in 1533 BC to the first day of the first month in 2030 is 1,301,000 days. Right. So this this was a symbol that we had that we applied when we were looking at uh, the story of um, in Judges 15. So that would be uh, Samson. Now, why did we. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly how we ended up first noticing this. I don't remember how, but anyway, we have that symbol, 3,000. Uh, well, pardon me, I'm doing this wrong because I put 3,101 is Joash, but that's actually the number we had was 1301. So, so this number is inverted. That's just a little bit of my dyslexia. Uh, I'm dyslexic with numbers. So, um, so Joash even though it's not the 1301, it's 3101, so it's inverted. Is that still significant? I don't know why I saw it the other way around, but. Can I do that? Can I take it as Josh, which is 3101? Can I attach it to the 1301? Because 1301, what was that? Why did we get that number? That was Barak, right? Okay. So it's interesting because Barak is 1301. But we have uh, Josh is 3101. So can we accept those two symbols as representing the same thing? A yay or a nay on that. Because I read it wrong. So so we know that um, the name of Barak is the Hebrew number 1301, but the name of Joash is 3101. The three and the one at the beginning are turned around. Are they the same symbol? So potentially the same as they are the same combination because of reflection, right? Okay, so so we can accept that this is um, this is a mirror, 
right? There's a mirror idea here. Now, and we can see, of course, we have Deborah and Barak. They're going to be fighting against uh, Sisera, right? So could we say that Gideon is the son of Barak in, in a symbolic sense, prophetically in our, our lines? Yes. Okay. So, so the fact that I'm dyslexic sometimes and put numbers in wrong so, and see them incorrectly is actually sometimes helpful. Okay. I've done, I've done this many times. Okay. So we have that symbol. Uh, yeah. So he's the judge that precedes Barak or, or follows Barak, right? So he follows, um, Gideon follows Barak. So after Barak, we have Gideon. So Barak precedes Gideon. So, yeah. So we can see that Joash there, being the son of Joash, we could just put, he's, he's the next judge after Barak, even though Joash and Barak are completely different people. But we can see that symbolically in the line. Now, um, so he returned from the battle. We can see here this word returned is that word shuv. Now, um, this idea of shuv, like I talk about it all the time, just because to me it's one of those interesting Hebrew words because it, you know, it's the one, um, like the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem. That word restore is shuv. It, it means to actually return or to turn. Sometimes it's translated as turn. Um, so it shows up lots. It's a very common uh, Hebrew word. And, and it has the number, the Hebrew number is 7725. And you, you can see there two and five is seven. Right. So you could have, you know, seven years of plenty, seven years of famine with the two and the five at the end. You can see how that fits in the 252 and the 525. It, it refers to this line, to this mirror. And um, so Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from battle before, from battle, before the sun was up. Right. So before the sun that's Keres, right? So that's that's the sun. That's the sun in the sky. Now the was up, of course, is added, but it just means um, um, so so before the sun rises. So I mean, you could, could say uh, that they could have probably put probably didn't need to put was up. They could before the rising of the sun. They could have just translated, right? That's how I would have translated it. Um, so what's the significance of that? That he returns from battle before the rising of the sun. Symbolically. Before the Sunday law. Okay, before the Sunday law? Okay. I wasn't thinking that way. Um But yeah, so we, we can look at the sun, the sun as you know, a symbol of sun worship. Um, what other way can we uh, look at the word the before the rising of the sun? Well, sunrise and the right history. The thing when uh... Before October 27th, okay, I didn't quite catch everything you said. October 22nd. Okay. Yeah, so in all right history. Yeah. The sunrise would be relating to Thursday of the 17th. Yeah, so the 10th day of the 7th, right? If we have midnight is July 21st and 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 sunset as uh, so it's between midnight and the Sunday law. So I, I think that would be a part of it there. So, 
So that's what that symbol refers to. Now, um, we also, it's interesting too, that when we have the word shuv and we have the word sun, notice that they have an iteration of the same digits. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if you take a look at that, those reiteration of the digit occurs nine times. Um, okay, you, you have to explain what you mean by nine times. Well, what you're looking at in 813. Yeah. 7725 and 2775 are all the same digits. They're just yeah. in a different order. Yep. Yeah. Nine different times in the Hebrew, there are different words that come up with those same four digits. Okay. So what are those words? I'm just working it out right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Because we're looking at a verse that's Judges 8.13. So we have to pay attention to these numbers. And, and we can see then that, you know, just with Joash taking those numbers in and rearranging them is allowed because we can see with son and returned that those are mixed up. So, so that can happen, right? That the numbers can be rearranged in these Hebrew numbers as symbols. Um, so the combined of the verse, that is if we take the entire verse and we do the gematria and we do reverse and forward gematria, and we combine them according to Aran here is one, five, three, nine. And you can see that those are another iteration of uh, three, nine, one, five, right? So the three, nine, one, five. So there are some things about this verse that it, it points us to, uh, I would say that the end of the seven, seven, seven structure Right with these verses before the before the sun is up, and what I'm thinking of is the close of probation. Now, if we think about this line, the seven 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 structure, there is a type of close of probation uh, that this line addresses. Now, remember, back in um, October, October thirteenth, well, October third, I guess, of two thousand eighteen, when. Tess introduces this November 9th date, 2019. Um, it's being understood by everybody that that's a close of probation. Now, during the camp meeting, I, I proposed that, that it's not a close of probation in the way that people were thinking. That is, they were thinking it's let him be righteous, be righteous still. And, and I'm pretty clear in the camp meeting that uh, the close of probation is for the false priests. Now, we do know, of course, that, that in a symbolic way, probation closes. That, we're, that is, we're not talking about individuals. We can't say anything about individuals' cases. But just on the line, November 9th is a close of probation for the false priests. It's the first day of the first month in, in one way. And uh, probably actually even in more than one way. But it, it is the first day of the first month. It's a parallel to September 11th, which is the first day of the first month. But we have to say that that close of probation still is occurring within that movement till the end of the 777 structure. Now, Jeff had said that there's going to be a week that from November 9th. So that, that's going to be a week, including November 9th, which would make it um, uh, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. So November 15th, the end of November 15th is the end of that period that Jeff laid out. And he does this in uh, on November 9th or 10th, maybe. I can't remember which day it is. I think it was November 9th. Um, might even even been on the 11th in the morning study on the 11th, the day that I left the School of the Prophets in 2019. But be that as it may, um, we can see that, that that week also represents the 777 days. And... So I'm suggesting that December 25th, 2021 is 
is the end of a period that begins on November 9th, 2019. That is a close of probation. That there is a close, that there is a close of probation, not just on a single day, but over that span of time. That is, people are making their decisions. And we see that even with the different various people that uh, end up rejecting the message, that basically they accept the message of Parminder against July 18. So, so when I look at this before the sun was up, I'm saying that that is symbolizing um, December 25th, 2021. Okay, so, and these are prefigured in, um, uh, you know, the December 25th, 2020 to um, January 6th, 2021, because in January 6th, 2021, the date is the 22nd day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar. So it has this close of probation and, um, as well. So we see all these little fractalized um, symbols within that whole line, within that structure. Now, Dwight, you have uh, an update there on what you were... One more thinking. minute. Okay. Um, so this 7725 and 2775, I'm saying that this is bringing us to December 25th, 2021. It's bringing us to the arrival of this third message on these lines. And... Um, so I'm just going to quickly go back here. Uh, just to look at the lines themselves. So I'm saying that um, these symbols representing the 777 structure bring us to the end of it. And notice we have that... Um, 434 days. That's a division of the 777 into 434 and 343. It's the 343 days there, right, after the 434. But we also have another, the other division of the 252 and the 525. So I believe that that's what that's referring to in these two words. So, so I believe that the third angel's message arrives here and that it's represented in this narrative starting in Judges 8.13. And in this story is going to be uh, that he catches this young man, that is Gideon's going to catch him. Now, um, now it's going to be the number uh, 3920. So we know that the 391 and a half days can also be understood as 392 days. That is, if you counted the cardinal count from October 13th to November 9th, it's going to be uh, 392 days. But we counted it from noon to midnight. That's why it's 391 and a half. So the, again, we have that symbol of the 391.5. Um, so we caught a young man of the men of Sukkoth and inquired of him and described unto him the princes of Sukkoth and the elders thereof, even three score and 17 men. Okay, so what is it in this verse here? Well, we have the number 77. Okay, so we have three score and 17, that's 77. So again, this brings us to the end of the 777 structure. Okay, so so we have all these symbols that, that bring us to the end of this. And um, then you're going to have this story um, uh, that he's going to apply this this um, this punishment to the men of Sukkoth and to the uh, to the men of Penuel, right? 
right? So he's he took the elders of the city and thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Sukkot. And, and this word taught is kind of interesting because it means to know properly, to ascertain by seeing, used in a great variety of senses, figuratively, literally, euphemistically, and inferentially, including observation, care, recognition, causatively instruction, designation, punishment, etc. Acknowledge, acquaintance, all these different ways in which it's translated. Uh, so, so they're going to punish them. So they're going to be whipped or beaten with these uh, um, briars and thorns. And then the men of Penuel, their tower is going to be taken down. Now, we had made the application in, in this line that this is representing December 25th and January 6th in that it symbolizes the messages of Odilio and Colin but this is not the messages of Adelia and Colin in this context, because that's going to be Ziva and Zelmuna that are being pursued. Right? So that is, they're not, um, so there's this instruction going on. So we know here it's punishment, but we can see that it, it relates to exactly what we're talking about here. Now, Anja put the Tower in Judges 8, 9, and 17 is like the high wall of Proverbs. 18.11 in contrast with the Tower of Proverbs 18.10. The rich man is the latest seeing, as in Proverbs 11.20. Um, so what she's referring to here in Proverbs 18, um, just go there, Proverbs 18. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the right Righteous runneth into it and is safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, and as in a high wall in his own conceit. And, um, and then there's Proverbs eleven twenty eight. Um, so, but anyway, when we look at this this idea, this contrast. And we can see that this tower, that the way that we look at this tower is the constitution breaking down of this tower on January 6th. Um, but it becomes uh, the rich man's wealth is his strong city and as a high wall in his own conceit. So these, these are contrasts. We can see that when it comes to uh, Trump's fall as well. Now, um, Dwight, you ready with your stuff yet or not? Check your email. Okay, there's an email. Okay, so what we have here is this document, which I can share. So we have um, 2775, 2577, 2757, 5277, 5727, 5772, 7725. So, um, so the first one, of course, is the sun. Go back there. Yeah. So Karsa or Keres is usually how I see the word Keres. It's also Karsa. So for some reason, I have the same number. Um, okay. Now, um, so the, the two, five, so um, I'll do it this way. I won't share that. I'll just look at the this way. So I'll keep this here, and then I'll just go through this. So 
Um, so we have two five seven seven. This is uh, a little bit tedious, but a hamathite. So that's what uh, two five seven seven is. And one of the families descended from Canaan, right? He comes from the word walled, right? And uh, a rich man, his, he builds a city, a strong city, and the walls, right? Um, right. Okay. So we can see some of these words have applications to what we're talking about in this um, in this study here. And then we have 2757. Can I read? Yeah, so this is to cut the thing, cut sharp. Uh, instrument, sharp cutting instrument, harrow or hoe. Um, you refer to being wounded. Um, that word shows up uh, in uh, 2 Samuel 12, 31. Um, and under the word harrows. And... Um, Arrows and then cheeses. Right. And cheeses unto the captain of their thousands. So it must have been a sharp cheddar. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I, I like the idea of the threshing sledge because that separates the wheat from the chaff. Okay. Yeah. And then we have uh, the next word is 5277. Nom. So five two seven seven. Naam. And that's only mentioned in uh, uh, First Chronicles four verse fifteen. It's a name, right? So you got that. Nom. Uh, so. So just sons of Caleb, the sons, son of Jephani, Iru, Ela, Naam, and the sons of Ela, even Kenaz. Okay, so um, that word means pleasantness, and just means to be agreeable, to pass in beauty, be delight, be pleasant, be sweet. So it's not a word that we're going to see very often. Um, and then we have uh, 5772. Don't forget 5727. Yeah, 5727, pardon me. Adan, um, and that means uh, to luxuriate or delight oneself. And that's in uh, Nehemiah 9.25. They took strong cities in a fat land and possessed houses full of all goods, well-digged vineyards and olive yards and fruit trees in abundance. So they did eat and were filled and became fat and delighted themselves in thy great goodness. 5727 and then 5772. So a lot of these don't show up very many times. Uh, or not, we can know that this is um, a word that has to do with marriage. It's translated as marriage. 
uh, cohabitation conjugal rights uh, is what it refers to. And then we have uh, 7725, which is protected by Jehovah. Whoops, no, that's the wrong one. Never mind. I cut that. That didn't make sense. Here, 7725, that's Shuv. And then 7752. That means to scourge. Uh, so that's going to be to scourge or whip. It's kind of interesting, too, in the context of the Judges 8.13. But also take a look at 7.257. Oh, did I miss that one? Yes. Seven two five seven. Lie down, lay lieth. So, rabats. Um, and to stretch oneself out, lie down, lie stretched out. To lie down, lie to cause to lie down. But it can also mean to make to rest. And in the situation with this with Gideon, yeah, was he? not standing up so that the nations, the the children of Israel could then rest from the battle that they'd had with these other nations. Mm -hmm. I think we covered everything here. Right. Of these, of these numbers. Now, uh, so what we can say is that these numbers relate to these lines. I mean, they could relate to other things as well. But um, if we're going to take this word charis, the sun was up and shuv returned, we can see that this brings us to the end of this line. We can see the three score and 17, the 77, of the princes of Sukkoth, right? And they're going to be... Uh, described to Gideon, right? Right. Okay. And so then he's going to come and he's going to, um, he says, it came unto the men of Sukkoth and said, behold, Zeba and Zalmunna, with whom ye did upbraid me, saying, are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto thy men that are weary. And he took the elders of the city and the thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Sukkoth. So, the idea here is that this is a message. This is an instruction, right? So if we're going to apply this to this third angel's message arriving, it's going to be referring back to um, December 25th and January 6th in response to this message that arrives on December 25th, 2021, right? Which is going to be, Colin's going to present a message. Stephen presents a message. The 777 years from 457 to 321, the year of the Sunday law. We can see that that applies. And we have that symbol there of the Sunday law on December 25th, 2021. So we can see before the sun comes up, we can, we can see that symbol there. Um, and uh, so at the end of that period, they're, they're going to be taught Right, they're going to be instructed. Based upon this chronology of these events that had preceded it. Now we know that Colin's going to present his interpretation of things that Trump is going to be uh, put back into power. That even though he lost the election and Biden was running the country, that that was going to all be overturned in some way. Um, you know, 
and 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 then it becomes the midterm elections where that's going to happen and now it's going to be 2024 um so we can see one is this this way of applying things is not in god's order that is when we do things and they're line upon line we don't have suppositions Right? We don't make guesses. We don't say time will tell or wait and see. We have a sure word of prophecy. And um, this isn't a criticism of people. That's you know We're not trying to attack people's characters or their motives or anything like that. We're just saying that this is a mistake that all of us have made. This movement has made. It was done in Millerite history. It's been done in the past in other lines and and we are given this opportunity with this message to be corrected now if we're not corrected then that's one thing right but we all need correction and that's not a criticism of somebody that they need correction it's just a reality <clears throat> now um so that message arrives, but then to de defeat Zeba and Zalmuna, right? So we're saying that Zeba and Zalmuna, we've, we've understood that these are the messages of, um, of that Colin and Odilio present. But they're not, they're not, they're just something about which there is strife. Okay. Yeah. Now, now I, have a, I have a question based on what you were referring to out of Judges 8.13. Yeah. Okay. You made the application there that this can line up with Daniel eight thirteen. Right. Palmani. Okay. Yeah. Now you've just read Judges eight fifteen, right? Okay. Yeah. Does that <clears throat> line up with the symbol that we have on the eighteen forty three and the eighteen fifty chart of an alliance that we should not enter into. So you're taking 158. Correct. Um, yes, we, we could we could definitely make that application. So we know he's talking about 158 on the 1843 chart. That's going to be the league with the Jews. Um, we also have the symbol of august 15th there right but i mean it's on it's on both charts yeah yeah and so we are we are warned throughout scripture that we are not to enter into a league and in this case symbolically didn't the men of sukkoth enter into league with zel with zeba and zalmuna by not supporting gideon well, I, I don't know if I would say that that's a league. They didn't support Gideon is what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, they didn't support Gideon. And, and that's, I mean, the main thing here is that we have this message that um, we have Zeba and Zalmuna. So we're saying that it's Adilio's and Collins' messages presented December 25th, 2021, and February 12th, 2022. Uh, Right. Right. And these these messages are are seeking to say. Uh, to sort of apply there's they're meant to support July 18 and. Uh, the idea that Trump is the last president of the United States. Right. So it's a solution to a problem. I just don't think it's the correct solution. Because we were already given the solution to the problem. We already understood on July 18th why the prediction failed. Um, and we were also, on January 6th, we already understood that, that Trump was the last president. And that confirmed it. Confirmed what Jeff was saying about Trump. Because if we understood the lines correctly then we would see that this was in a symbolic line that we were in, that, that Jeff never was 
in actuality talking about the big lie, even if he believed he was. Right? This can't be midnight and midnight cry on the big line. And we know midnight is raffia, and the midnight cry is paneum, but we're not to midnight yet. Now, we can say that January 6th is raffia on a line, but it's not that line. Because we're with November 9th, we're in a line that typifies from September 11th to the Sunday law, right? That is that 777 days is a typification of something that's on a bigger line. That is, it's a fractal. And so within that fractal, we have to recognize those symbolic events as symbolic, not as the events themselves. And so when we try to apply these events to this big line, we run into problems. And we've been doing this all through this movement. We've been on these, these way marks where we would say this was midnight and this was the midnight cry. But we were doing it um, with this staggered idea of Parminder's. But that didn't pan out and it didn't make sense actually from the beginning because we see nothing like that in Millerite history. What we do see in the lines is that when we have a way mark, we can zoom into it and we have another line. And so that's a line down, right? And that line can carry some of the same way marks or the same events, but they're going to be different way marks on that line, right? They're going to give light to that line. So that's what we are in right now. And that's why, you know, I said we don't have the Sunday law as being imminent because we have events that have to occur first. Now, we know the Sunday law is soon. How soon, we don't know. But we we have to have other events preceded. And, and the main events that have to precede it is the work that God has given us to do. So now in this, in this uh, story here, as we try to, to finish this off, we see the next thing that happens. So first he punishes them. That is, he's referring back to these events. So on December 25th, 2021, we have a reference back to these previous events, the bombing of Nashville and um, the, the siege of Washington. But then we're going to have this, the rest of this story here. Um, um, so he's going to say unto Zeba and Zalmunna, that is Gideon is, what manner of men were they whom ye slew at Tabor? And they answered, thou, as thou art, so were they. Each one resembled the children of the king. Now, we believe that this possibly refers back to the story of Gideon and Barak, right? And yet, this is quite a bit later. So we're, we're not sure if this is actually what's being referred to, correct? We're not sure about it. I... You said uh, Gideon and Barak. Do you mean uh, Deborah? Yeah, yeah. Deborah and Barak, yes. <laughs> Goes back to the story of Deborah and Barak, right, at Mount Tabor. So were Zeba and Zalmunna there, or is this, you know, it, it doesn't really make much sense to us time-wise. But at least sim it symbolizes that, right? I would say I would say that hence hence of a connection. Okay, I didn't catch what you said there, Stephen. I'm saying that it hints of a connection with that uh, Battle of Tabor. Yeah, so there's a hint of a connection. Symbolically at least, right? So we know that that there's something about this Zeba and Zalmuna that that means it sides with Parminder's message, right? 
this was kind of offensive to Colin. He was pretty offended by this, this idea that, you know, that there is sympathy with Parminder's message. But the, the sympathy is, in this case, has to do with the approach that Parminder used in dealing with those that he differed with. It was subterfuge, sub, subterfuge. I could say that word correctly, right? It was, it was in darkness. It wasn't a direct, let's discuss these things, sit down and study them. Okay. Now, so however we look at this, this was referring back to, again, to that story of Deborah and Barack and, and the conflict with Parminder. And he said, they were my brethren, even the sons of my mother. As the Lord liveth, if ye had saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said unto Jether, his firstborn, up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared because he was yet a youth. Okay, so we have Jether here. Um, he's the eldest. So what is this referring to? How would we place this at December 25th, 2021? So he'd be an av avenger of blood, right? The name means uh, abundance. It's the idea of an overhanging, right? So excess, you know, like an overflowing cup. But we, we, we said that this was this lack of support within the movement, specifically on December 25th, 2021, that there is many people who could have uh, supported what was happening in that conflict that I had with um, with Colin, you know. But he feared because he was yet a youth. That is, this is my interpretation, that there are people in the movement who um, really didn't want to take sides. They didn't want to, and not that there's sides, right, in a sense, but they didn't want to support what I was saying. You know, and not just December 25th, but even after that. And, and even before that, too, in the conflicts that had happened uh, with the American group. My personal view is that if people would speak up more in what they believe when they see maybe what they might call an injustice or something being done, uh, that isn't in accordance with uh, the principles of, of God's word and the counsel and the spirit of prophecy. And if they just were heard, not, not in an angry denunciation or anything, but just in a discussion that is, yeah, as Angela says, there's no neutrality in God's army, right? And I think that that's partly what I've seen in, in my view of things that, that has affected this movement is our neutrality. Doesn't mean we have to go into battle against people and be harsh or accusatory. Right? It just means that we need to be, we need to speak up and be heard if we see something happening that we think is not correct. So so that's how we made the application of Jether. So it's in this conflict over this situation with uh, the study of Colin and the study of Adilio. Um, 
So eight months and 20 days is the 20th day of the ninth month. So we could put that there. Um, so again, I know I'm I know I'm always looking back. Yeah. But is Judges 817 another symbol of July 18th? Um well, we, we place it there as January 6th. I'm just saying the digits. Yeah, okay. So you got, yeah, so we have 817. So we could say that's July 18. So it, it deals with the message of July 18. Right. <clears throat> now, more specifically, when we had... Um, Colin study. Colin study dealt with Trump. And Odilio study dealt with July 18th, right, with Nashville. That's basically the way that I see Odilio study. And, and I, I maybe don't understand it fully, but nothing happened on July 18th. But he took these mandates and these spans and he showed that there were all of the symbols of July 18 were there, right? So he's using this as an argument that July 18 was correct. But he's now applying it to the pandemic, right? That it's fulfilled in that way. Because what I see in Odilio's and Collins studies is a way to try to support what we understood because the two principal things that that people were taking as the failure of, of Jeff, what he had failed at, was the idea that Trump was the last president and that Nashville was going to be hit by a nuclear attack on July 18th. Those two things now appear to have failed, right? That's, that's the understanding. Right. And, and their studies do support that. They're both correct in their support if you look at what the root of their studies is. The chronology is correct, for instance. Um, but the thing is the framework in which to understand them. And I know I repeat myself about this all the time, but the problem was we don't have these definite lines and we don't know where to fit them. And so the conclusions drawn are wrong. And if the movement had said, if, if all the people who wanted to study this said, what we need to do is study these things together and examine them, if follow the counsel that Ellen White has given, the movement would be in a much different condition than it is today. We would have a camp meeting that everybody's supporting, you know, a camp meeting that's not being boycotted. Right. And I use the word boycott because people are not just saying that they're not going to go. They're putting pressure on other people just through peer pressure not to go as well. Right. If Colin said, I'm going to be there and you should be there, too, because that's what Colin should be saying. Then that would be great. But Colin is not saying that, saying he's not going to go. And so he's it's it's a type of boycott. And that wouldn't have happened if on December 25th, 2021, instead of trying to shut down discussion, we said, yes, we need to look at this. We need to hear what, what's being said by Theodore, by Colin. We need to study this together. We all need to be heard. We all need to put um, our insight that God has given each one of us into this discussion and see what where this leads us. That's what the movement should have done. And that's what I'm thinking that we see here in this Jether being given this opportunity to slay Zeba and Zalmuna, but he refuses. So Gideon is going to have to do this. That is, the message of July 18 is not supported 
in its in its uh, application of of how what it should how it should be understood its true application the zibad zalmuna are issues over which there's this strife this midianites it's strife within the movement that's what's being shown here so we would have to take uh, Judges 8.13 to 8.21 as that third angel arriving. Any, any thoughts on that? I mean, to me, it seems clear, but, you know, just because I see it doesn't mean that it's correct. I'm going to put it in here. I'm just going to put here Jether as the I mean it's got more than Jether but that's ultimately where it leads to and we have lots of symbols here right so we have um Obviously, 813. With the verse 813, we have the symbolism here. So I'm just going to create a box with that in it. Um, so one we have in 813, we have Palmoni. So we have uh, Shuv, which is, um, what's it, 7725? And then we had Kemesh, which was 2775. I should put the H there, so it's the Hebrew number. We also had um, Gideon, the son of Joab. Uh, what's his name? Joash, yeah, that's right. Okay. Son of Joash. Right. And that is going to be 20th day of the ninth month. Okay. And then we're going to have. Um, Joash itself, himself, but the word Joash being 3101, and that's going to represent the iteration of which is. Uh, Barak. Like that. Anything else? I mean, there's lots of other words and, and symbols. 
we're going to put that here. So that obviously 813 becomes uh, pregnant with symbolism in, in numbers. Just like in this other line we had um, in the line of Jeroboam, let me see, where was it? Uh, that must have been... Anyway, what we're going to put here, I'm just going to put this 364 days. And then we had it in some other lines. I don't remember where. <clears throat> Um, so we're putting December 25th. I guess we should say it's 365 days. Maybe not three. Okay, 365 days. <clears throat> so December 25th, 2022. Um, it's the first day of the 10th month. Where... We know that December 25th, 2020 was the 20th day of the ninth month, right? The first day of the 10th month, the symbol of, this, of uh, the beginning of the divorcement. Right. So, so we can see here how this line all fits together. I mean, to me, it's quite remarkable that, that we started with Judges 2 and we noticed this... Um, this structure that we could we could make an application of judges to from 911 to 2023 and then we started with that premise that we that that's what judges was about we found that each of these lines uh fit in yeah so in genesis 5:23 enoch lived 365 days 365 years pardon me not days and um and we can see how that relates to the 365 days here. So obviously these symbols of a year, we have 364, we have 350, 353, 354, 365, 383, other places where we have spans of a year between events. And now we're going to say that that's uh, the fourth angel arriving. Now on this line here, because in the line of Jeroboam, um, we're going to have the first day of the first month being symbolized by Gideon's ephod. Now we haven't, I mean, we could just put Gideon's ephod there as well in the death of Gideon again in this line. Right. So both of them could, could apply, but here we have a different first day of the 10th month. This is literally the first day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar going to the first day of the first month. In 2030, here we have a symbolic first day of the 10th month. That is, the span of time is 88 months from the end of Collins' prediction to April 5th, 2030. And marking the 88 days of the period from the first day of the first, first day of the 10th month in 457 BC uh, to well, I guess it's going to be 458, the first day of the first month in 458, 456, pardon me, 456, going backwards. So 456. So can't remember the date, but it's it's definitely in, in the new year in Ezra when they start that. But anyway. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the year for, well, the number 457. Yeah. The idiot by number. Okay, so the number 457 is is a prime number and it's the 88th prime number. So the symbol there of course 88 days we can see that that, that applies. So here in this line um uh
we'd go from that first day of the 10th month. And that would be that symbol. But 88 shows up in lots of different ways that Jeff has used it. And we know that 888 refers to, uh, to, to Christ, to Jesus. It's the symbol of the resurrection. <clears throat> so hopefully people are satisfied with this, this line. I, I don't think we're going to finish, like we're not going to uh, continue on this line. Uh, so next week we're going to start looking at Jotham's line again and just more information for that and Abimelech's downfall. So, so we're going to start looking at Judges chapter 9 and putting the verses in uh, that applies to this. Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Of course, if people watch watching the videos, if you have questions or comments or points, I prefer people put them on the video itself in the comments. I know people write me emails and sometimes they message me in Messenger. It seems to be that's how mostly people communicate. But I always think it's good if you put your comments on the video itself so that my response will be seen by everyone. Right? So I wish people would do that, but most of the time they don't. And eight times eight times eight is a two to the power of nine. So what he's saying is eight times 64 which is the number 512. And we've looked at that before, the number 512 is um, two times two times two times, two, so nine times, right? Okay. Okay, well, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study for this morning. And uh, for each person that has participated and that is watching these videos, we just pray, Lord, that you can continue to instruct us. And we pray for this movement. We pray for Colin, Adilio, uh, Daniel Fontenot, and all the, the others in the group that are following the studies. We just ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can reveal to us our need of you and that we can come together uh, in the upper room, that we can confess our sins one to another and how we have hurt one another, and that we can recognize uh, the damage we have done to the movement because of our personal feelings. Help us, Lord, to recognize these in ourselves. We pray this and ask it. In Jesus' name, amen.